Hi, in my physics class today we were working through a breadth in physics paper which is the new exam paper from OCR for 2015-2016 and the new, the, the particularly new thing about this paper is that it has a multiple choice section and one of the questions proved to be pretty challenging. Question 9. So I thought I'd make a video about the solution so you can see how I've solved it and perhaps someone has got a better solution than me but I think that this was not really suitable as a multiple choice question. Unless, of course, there is a shortcut that I don't know about. I also think that the wording for the question was that this could be quite confusing for students. It's accurate and I understood it, I understood what it was asking, but I think a lot of students may not be so clear on what it was understanding. So let's have a look at the question and have a look at the solution. A car accelerates uniformly from rest along a level road. So far, so good. The effects of air resistance on the car are negligible. Fine. The car travels 12 metres in the second second of its journey. Now, I think that repetition of second here, whilst if you think about it, you can understand it, some students will probably find quite confusing. So this first instance of second means the second instance of something, and this second instance of second is a reference to the unit of time second. So the second second means between one and two seconds, and I'll draw a diagram to show what I mean. The question is asking how far does it travel in the fourth second of its journey? We've given four options, 28 metres, 35, 48 and 64 metres. So this is how I solved that problem. Uh, what I did was draw a timeline to represent the car's journey over the first four seconds. So we've got zero there, one, two, three, and four. So this is T here in seconds. The question tells us that in the second second, it travels 12 metres. So we know that the distance covered here is 12 metres. And we want to know what this distance is here. Okay. Now, if it's travelled 12 metres in one second, that means that its average speed over this time is 12 metres per second. And because it's a uniform acceleration, that means that halfway between it will actually have it would actually have that velocity. So at 1.5 seconds, the velocity will equal 12 meters per second. So it will actually be less than 12 meters per second there and larger than 12 meters per second there. But when it crosses the halfway point, because you've got a straight line, it would be at uh, 12 meters per second at 1.5, so halfway between. So we can use that to find that information out. Now we can use that further to work out the acceleration. Because it's constant acceleration, we can use the equations of constant acceleration. And so you could write down your data that you know. What I'm going to do is consider the time from zero to 1.5 seconds. I know it starts from rest, so I know that u is zero here, u equals zero. So I'm going to use that, u equals zero, s I don't know, v is 12 meters per second, because I'm going from zero to 1.5 seconds, that's this time frame here, so if I perhaps write that, so this is from zero to 1.5 seconds, that's the actual time frame I'm considering. The acceleration is what I want to know. And t is 1.5 seconds because it's 1.5 minus 0, so the actual time frame there is 1.5. We can use the equation v equals u plus a t, rearrange for a. So a is v minus u over t, and that equals 12 minus 0 over 1.5, which is 8 metres per second squared. So now that's the first stage and I know the acceleration. I can then use the acceleration to find out further data. 
The next stage will be to find out how far did the car travel at three seconds. So I'm going to call that S3. After that, I will then find out S4, so the distance travelled at four seconds. If I find out the difference between them, then I find out how far it travelled in that one, in that fourth second. So we've got first second, second second, third second, fourth second. There. S3 then. I'm going to use the equation ut plus a half at squared. My data has changed, so s plus write down s u v a t s three. U is zero, so I'm going from zero to three seconds now. V is, I don't know, A is eight meters per second squared, it's constant, so that's fine. T is three. So using that data, S3 is zero plus a half, perhaps I'll write, I'll write the whole equation down. Um, so you understand which equation I'm using. So I'm using that equation, now I'll substitute the data in. So it's zero plus half times eight times t squared, which is three. So that's half times eight is four, three squared is nine, so that's four times nine, which is 36 meters. Okay. To its favour, the question, the numbers in the question are straightforward. You don't even need to get your calculator out for these. Then we do the same thing, but for S4 this time. So let's change this one to the, the data I'm using now is S for S4, and this is four seconds. So the only things that have changed are I'm calculating a different distance and it's different time. So S4, same equation, zero plus. 0.5 times 8, which is 4, times by 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, 4 16 is 64. Last stage to work out what we actually want to know is S4 minus S3. That's equal to S, and that's uh, 64 minus 36, which is 28 metres. 28 metres, that's A. And that was the answer for the, uh, the in the mark scheme. Um, mark scheme doesn't provide any working. That's how I did it. I if I think if that was a standalone calculation question, not a multiple choice question. So if this was in section B, basically, I reckon that'd be worth three or four marks. So there's quite a lot of work there. So I'm thinking they're, they're quite likely as a shortcut, but I don't know what it is. Uh, my advice to students is if you get a question like this, um, none of my students were able to come up with a method to solve this in the 25 minutes allowed for section A. <coughs> so not just for this question, 25 minutes, but 25 minutes for all of section A. Uh, if you get a question like this, then you need to move on. You need to make sure that you progress through all of the multiple choice section to make sure you get the most amount of marks. If you spend a lot of time on a question like this and don't get anywhere, even just writing that out took quite a while, but if you weren't getting anywhere, then, and you don't get to do five or six questions in section A, uh, then that's five or six marks. So you, you wanna make sure you get as many marks as possible, and then if you have time left over within the like, time for section A, go back to questions like this and see if you can solve it there.